coordination with the local school districts and the Military Child Education Coalition to expand services to those indirectly affected. Lieutenant General Cohn, Command Sergeant Major Coleman, and senior leadership have visited and conversed with the wounded, family members, civilians, and unit personnel almost around the clock. I'd highlight that I had the distinct privilege last night of going to visit Sergeant Munley and some of the other soldiers uh, at a local hospital. Uh, and truthfully, it's just, it, was on, it was an honor just to be in their presence. And I, if I could use two words to describe uh, her and the other young, young man that I got to meet, it's strong, the, the, the term Army Strong is not just a motto, it's them. Their families are strong, their families are there with them, and, and it was a, a wonderful experience to see them and get the opportunity to talk to them. The second word I would use to describe them is selfless. I cannot tell you how many times they reiterated to me that this is not about them. They're not interested in notoriety. All they could ask about was how are the others doing, express grief for those that were lost, and just want to move on. And, uh, and they're so proud of their teammates and their comrades for how, how they responded and reacted. And again, it was just an honor there, uh, to get an opportunity to, to spend a little bit of time with them. And, and I'd also highlight their families, uh, strong families, loving families that have come in on, under short notice, that are there caring for with them around the clock, staying with them. And, uh, and they also expressed uh, gratitude to the local hospital for its great care for them uh, while I was there last night with them also. We've worked diligently to reunite families and loved ones with their soldiers. Uh, in fact, Sergeant Munley's husband was there last night from Fort, Fort Bragg, and uh, it was a great opportunity to see him as he stood by her side. We'd again like to mention that survivor outreach services are available for support on Fort Hood, as well as other areas of, of support, spiritual, emotional, physical support uh, at our resiliency campus and across the installation uh, for those who seek and need it. We want to stress that, again, this is not just for those directly affected by this tragedy, as uh, many can uh, recall past trauma and be affected by it, even if they were not directly involved with the incident, and it can be brought to light at a later date. So we're offering and encouraging anyone ex ex uh, who, who thinks they might need any kind of help to please seek it, and we will find a way to, to assist. Second area I'd want to address is memorializing and honoring the victims. Remains of the deceased are at Dover, Delaware, as I mentioned yesterday, and are going through the same process as those soldiers that would be killed in Iraq or Afghanistan. There's a medical examiner piece of it, obviously, and then mortuary affairs. The dignified return of remains to the families cannot be understated or shortcutted, as it's such a critical process. There is ongoing planning for a memorial ceremony to honor our fallen here on Tuesday, to honor our fallen, our wounded, and their loved ones. We are in full support of the White House for the presidential portion of this ceremony. Third thing I want to highlight is appreciation for support. We again express our appreciation for the outstanding support of the medical com community in Central Texas area. And we are also confident that the wounded are receiving the absolute best care and concern. And again, that was highlighted to me last evening. We again wish to acknowledge the businesses in the local area that are, have offered food, lodging, and other support to help care for our soldiers and our families. And likewise, we express our gratitude to the local clergy, which Fort Hood has always had a close relationship with and has really proven beneficial in the wake of this event. And I'd, I would highlight about this, this community, the Fort Hood community, that th this is not something new because of this event. This relationship is enduring. It has been there. It continues now through this tragedy, and it will continue in the future. Lastly, we'd like to thank Congressman John Carter for his initiative introducing House Resolution 895 which honors the victims of the tragedy at Fort Hood. I'd like to conclude by emphasizing that Fort Hood as a community and family continues to focus on healing while continuing to prepare for our missions at hand. At this time, I'll take a few questions. Well, sir, sir, I'd like to ask you as a result of the incident, how is life different now on this base in terms of security and also psychological monitoring and care? How, what's the new normal on this base now as a result of that incident? Well, uh, uh, at Fort Hood, Again, we've, we've, we're assessing security measures as would be expected, and you'll see some enhanced security that uh, initially was, was pretty heavy as we had gates closed, eventually scaled it down, and we're continuing to monitor vulnerabilities, do an assessment uh, to do what's right for the, for the installation. But you'll see there's a lot of routine activity still happening. As I mentioned, there's units that are still training 
for their missions, preparation for deployment, the readiness processing site uh, where this took place at, which is now a crime scene. We simply had to pick it up and move it to another location to keep soldiers processing to, to keep that cycle ongoing. Again, from the second part, I believe it was a psychological aspect of it. Um, what I'd highlight there is soldiers and families, I don't want to say are used to this, but soldiers are trained to respond with their combat preparations to some of the violence that was we saw here on Thursday. There's gunshots, there's wounded. Soldiers are trained to respond, to care for wounded, to move wounded, to control the environment, secure the environment, and then move on from that point. So their training kicks in, and that's what we saw, the training of the soldiers and the training of our DES agents who contributed to that. Obviously, the unique aspect of it, the surprising aspect and the concerning one is that it didn't happen in Iraq or Afghanistan. The troubling part of it is it happened here in our own house. And that's the piece that most are, are troubled with right now is, is, is the location of where it happened and how could that happen. So we're doing our best to, to move forward in that. All resources that can be brought to this location are still coming in to assist in the behavioral piece of this. Again, our concern is not just the immediate, we're focusing on that right now, but we, we know that sometimes problems take a while to manifest themselves in individuals and might come up at a later time period. So we're looking to now for immediate response and we're also working the long-term activities, uh, even again for the children off the installation that could be affected by this indirectly. Colonel, um, for the victims who passed away, will they be getting uh, the same type of honors as if they were, say, killed in action, will it be a flag presentation to families and things like that? Absolutely. What happened, again, after the, uh, the medical piece of it, again, and goes to the mortuary affairs, at that point, they'll work for the uh, return, the dignified return of the remains to the family that's in the process right now, at which point they will uh, work the, their, at their location with families for funerals and, and those kind of activities. And uh, the, these heroes are being treated uh, the same way. That, that's, that, again, is all part of the investigation. The investigation continues. Uh, we absolutely want to maintain the integrity of the investigation. All of that is being looked into. All of that will be brought uh, to fruition as the investigation is completed. Don't, I do not want to speculate on that, and uh, we'll, we'll move forward from here. What do you say about it? I, I don't have that information right now. Just you know studies. about his condition in general? Is he up and around? Perhaps he's not saying anything. Just right now is is that uh, what I just put out? He's in ICU and in stable condition, off the off the ventilator. I'm sorry. Well, I think last night with uh, Chris Gray that was that was highlighted for the way the investigation continue right now. It's the crime scene investigation, which is secured here on the installation. Uh, there's numerous agencies that are that are involved with this. The criminal investigation division in the lead the FBI is involved. Several other agencies and they're pursuing this investigation at this point, and then uh, from that point, a decision will be made on whether or not, if any, charges will be pressed. Sir, could you say whether Major Hassan had a purpose for being in that building that day? Was he working there? Was he supposed to be there? Was he not supposed to be there? No, my understanding is, is that uh, there was no purpose for him at that point to be in there that what day. Was he, 